Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the Scale Log. We're going to talk about scales today, one of my favorite things. Uh, welcome to the Practice Log, too, because we are also going to practice, and I bet you there'll be scales in the practice, too. Let's go ahead and jump into it, shall we? All right, I'm excited about this one. But first, let's go over all the stuff we're going to do today. I'm working on the Presto. That's the main thing, and we're going to get this whole Sonata down. I think it's coming along pretty well, actually. I know in the extravaganza you just watched, I skipped the fugue. Um, I don't know. I, I played it kind of flat, and I wasn't very proud of it. It was a little too slow. And then it still was, like, a little sloppy. It just wasn't good. Well, I've been taking this time to answer comment questions, so let's take a look at the comments section. Which, this is one I have prepared. So, this is from DK Sachs, a uh, friend of the channel. What's going on? Since you've talked so much about scales, what are your go-to resources for learning scales on guitar? Segovia scales plus other things? Uh, yeah, essentially. Segovia scales plus other things. And I'm gonna show you that today. Now, I'm not gonna talk much about, like, the inherent harmony that's inside of scales, and how you can move around the scales. I might a little bit, because I sometimes can't help myself. We will definitely at least cover how to play and where to find all those scale positions I was talking about, and maybe some misconceptions that I hear commonly. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into that part of this, shall we? All right, here we are. We finally made it to the scale portion of the show. <laughs> It's been 130 episodes. So, first thing I want to start with, because we have the Segovia scales, and I'm going to do everything in G major today, just because it kind of works out well on the guitar. So let me actually get my guitar. And I believe this was a comment by Steven, but you said that you practice the Segovia scales. But they don't really help you with improv. Of course, the reason why is because the scale, uh, it's kind of linear. It only covers all the notes played in one spot. Kind of like you're playing like a woodwind or something. Like it's just a linear scale. Uh, but the thing is the guitar is not a linear instrument. It has more than one dimension. It's not just up and down. Like you can play a note there and there and there and it's all the same note, right? So let's just cover the G major Segovia scale. So we're gonna start on G. All right, then we have A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. We have the first octave of the scale there. So you can try to play that back at home. But -da 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 -da. Now we have A, B, C, and then I'm shifting here on D, E, F sharp, and then we do a shift here to G, A, B, C, D, and then shift to 12, E, F sharp, G, and that is our three octave Segovia scale. Hopefully you can see that. And all that together will sound like this. Shift, shift, shift. This scale, though, it's going to cover the same range of the scales that I'm going to show you. We're leaving out a lot of places where we can also play the G major scale. So let's go ahead and fill those in. So we know that here is Do, and then Do is also there. And we know that the scale formula for a major scale is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So I'm just going whole step, which whole step changing strings like this, pinky to index finger. And then whole step, of course, is just two frets, so whole, whole, and then half. And then a whole step from third to second is going to be that, so two frets down, whole, 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 that's pinky to index again, and then half, and then whole again, because that's do, so off of that is whole. Uh, so that's how we fill in the rest of it. Now, let's do the same thing here, but instead of changing strings on re, this note here, let's just go to me from re, and then from me to fa, like that. And now we have fifth position, and we're going to fill all this in like that. And if we do the math and all that, that's what the position looks like. So we end up with our second position. And then our fifth position. Do. And now you can start seeing these patterns that I'm looking at here. Like if I want to play big sweeping arpeggios, I'm holding down these notes and I'm holding down these notes and I'm holding down these notes and then adding melody using the rest of the scale. So like for example, when I play I bar everything and I'll play bum 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 and then I'll play thirds here like bum 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 yeah pretty nice and you can do that everywhere uh, okay oh yeah and a lot of you might recognize this as like the mode positions so I don't like calling these modes I'd rather just call this like the second position G major or the fifth position G major and the reason why we don't call them modes is because they don't sound like modes modes are a very particular thing that have like a particular sound we can play a Dorian that's not G major our, our tonal center there is a and that's why it sounds like a Dorian scale I 
key signatures and tonal centers are different things. They have different implications. So a key signature implies that there's going to be tonic and dominant function. So this is what G major sounds like. It's not this. It's this. While G Ionian is this. Or any other mode, like G Dorian. There's no tonic dominant in modes, which I mean, you could argue that there is sort of, but like to keep it easy there, when you're thinking of modes, there's no tonic dominant function, whatever. Argue with me in the comments. We have two of our positions there, second position, fifth position, and I'll show you a chart where they're all separated. All right, next let's fill in the seventh position, which same thing, we have mi, fa, and then sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, boom. So that's the seventh position. When I'm teaching my students how to play these, I never let them just look at the chart and then play it. I always say, what position are we in? Okay, we're in seventh position. And what fingers are you going to use to play this? So it'd be one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, one, two, four, one, two, four. Okay, can you say that from memory? And if you can, you will probably be able to play it. One, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. And we have all of our scale positions. Well, three of them at least. All right, next up is the 10th position scale. So we're on sol, la, ti, do, re. So do is that note now. Re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, and then fa. That's the 10th position. And let's go ahead and fill in the 12th position. La, ti, do, re, mi, fa, <laughs> sol, la, ti, do, fa, sol, la, ti, do. All right, and there, that completes the 12th position. Uh, and after that, everything just repeats again because everything repeats on the guitar. So if we look at this shape here, which, ooh, let me fill in that T right there, just so we can have it all. So look at this, we have like a square, and then this sort of shape. If we look down here, that is the exact same thing. And what that means is what repeats after this, which is like that, that's gonna repeat here. And now, instead of just having a long scale that only goes through one line, we can now see everything that I was talking about. How like, let's take G major, for example. We have this right here. That's a... That's like our major, like highly extended major triad there. And then. And then we have the same thing there. And these are just kind of foundations to kind of plant your hands to play stuff. Which once we're getting up there, things are getting kind of high up. But you can see how you can bar everything here and then do your big arpeggios. Which like, of course, if you only do that, you're gonna play a lot of stuff that sounds the same, but it's just a framework. And the cool thing with these scales, once you learn them in G major, it's pretty easy to transpose these to any key. Um, oh, and of course, if you want to play in minor, you just find La and make that your new Do. Of course, add the leading tone, and then you'll be playing harmonic minor. All right, now, how can you start practicing these, especially for improv? Something that you could do, you could just go through each one of these positions. So if we look at like the first one here, let me actually zoom way in our second position scale. Learn how to play that. First, say the fingers out loud. One, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four, one, two, four. And know where your root is. A good way to really learn this and to start like actually improvising, start with just the first string, for example, and just play to a pulse using just those three notes. And you can repeat notes. And just keep a pulse going. And then as you get comfortable, move on to the next one. And just make sure you don't play any outside notes for now. Keep going. Explore all the different possibilities you can have until you can speed the pulse up. And now, uh, something cool, I wasn't going to talk about like harmony, but... And here's what all the scales look like separately. You can uh, take a screenshot of that or something. We have like our second, fifth position, seventh, tenth, and then twelfth position, and all those connect, and they show the separate positions on the fretboard. And those are like the normal shredder scales that you see. But learn your Segovia scales and then connect them with those positions so you can cover the entire fretboard. Oh, and these are also the scales that I primarily use for sight reading as well. Usually when you're reading, unless it's something really crazy, you're typically going to be in a position for a while. So find the scale position and and then you just have to follow the line and that's gonna make everything a lot easier. And I can explain more of that later.
All right, well, I think that pretty much covers that one. So I will probably make more scale videos, and I know I left out a lot of stuff. Like, I just, I'm trying to fit it all in one thing. I'll see you at the piano bench. All right, <laughs> kicked over my stool. Yeah, Bach to it, Bach to it. I think I'm gonna start with the Presto today, just to jump into the new stuff. Then we'll go over everything else, of course. Really trying to get this Sonata down. It's not a joke. Hope you like the scales. I'll see you on the other side. I actually feel pretty good about the work I've done here today. Um, so, let me bring you closer. I skipped it in the extravaganza, so how about I play... I'll just play the first half of the fugue for you. I think that'll be good. I need to change my string soon. One tick. No scratch notes. No mistakes. And that was the first half, like I promised. Yeah, all right, what'd you think of that? It's pretty good, right? Pretty good. Okay, it's time for me to start my day, I'd say. So, let's go ahead and, uh, do I have any comments on that? I don't know. I'm working on it. All right, this this one's been long enough. I'm sure we spent a long time in the scales, and that was kind of a long passage I just played. Uh, so, let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed that. And, you know, if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, all that stuff. Hey, want some lessons? Want to learn how to play classical guitar? I can be your teacher, because I'm teaching on YouTube now. So, just check the description, and you can have some lessons with me. Yeah, and of course, if you have any questions about anything or comments, feel free to leave them, and I'll address them in the chair at some point over there. You know the deal. Yeah, well, I'll see you tonight. <laughs>